The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Johnson. Good morning and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johnson. Coming up on today's show, we'll visit a dairy farm in Calhoun County that has found a way to stay in business while similar operations across the state have closed their doors. We'll also see how Auburn University is using the latest technology to teach students and adults about the world around them using nothing more than a smartphone or tablet. And Sydney Phelps with Bonnie Plants is back in the kitchen cooking up a tasty snack from one of the healthiest plants in your backyard garden. But to get us started, we'll take a trip back in time to our state's first capital. We're off to Dallas County and Alabama's most famous ghost town, next on Simply Southern. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you. With a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application, you'll always find what you need. Plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. The blessing of Alabama agriculture is more than three meals a day. It means independence from foreign nations, freedom to pursue other jobs and activities, conservation of natural resources, and preservation of family values. For 93 years, the Alabama Farmers Federation has brought together the men and women whose work fills our plates and fuels the American dream. Today's farming operation is more complex than ever before, with precision agriculture becoming an integral piece to farm management. AccuField provides precision agriculture technologies and site-specific management capabilities in a simplified and interactive format, helping you put all the pieces of the farming puzzle together. For more information, visit us at www.accufield.com. I'm just like my customers. I work hard and I play hard. I also help my dad on the farm when I can. That's the great thing about Alpha. We work hard for our customers. It's more than price. It's personal attention and great claim service. Hey, for the best agents in the business, call Alpha. History runs deep throughout our state. Alabama has seen the birth of civil war and civil rights, forged the iron and steel of a new industrial age, and launched the ships that took us to the stars. It's easy to see how our earliest beginnings can diminish with time. This week we travel down the river from Alabama's capital city of today to Old Cahaba to explore the ruins of where our state began. The White Dome of Alabama's capital in Montgomery has become emblematic of the state's rich past, but it wasn't the first to hold that distinction. Depending on who you ask, Alabama has had as many as five capitals. We get some visitors asking, well, wasn't St. Stephen's the capital or, or Huntsville? And, and they're kind of confused about the matter because Alabama did have quite a few state capitals. But Alabama's first state capital was Cahaba. Tucked away in the rural country just south of Selma, rest the ruins of what once was the pride of our newly emerging state. Little today remains of the structures and shady streets that made up this once thriving river town. But at Old Cahaba Archaeological Park, it only takes a little imagination to get a glimpse of how things used to be. This is an entire town that used to be, that isn't anymore, but everywhere you look, you can see traces of that town. And it's not reconstructed. This is a place that people can come and they can explore. They can find things that we've never seen before. Alabama's first governor, William White Bibb, was instrumental in locating the fledgling state's first capital, arranging purchase of the land from the federal government. The area's rich soil and ready access to two major rivers created instant interest in Cahaba, and lots sold for top dollar. The early land sales at Cahaba financed the new state of Alabama. 
If you were to open the treasury book, look at page one, the first transactions were the result of land sales here at Cahaba. The capital moved away from Cahaba in 1826, and the aftermath of civil war, floods, and changing politics have left a true Alabama ghost town behind today. The park street suggests the thoroughfares of yesteryear, passing by glimpses into antiquity still standing, as well as the footprints left behind. Visitors can see the ruins of the Perrine Well. Folklore calls it the deepest artesian well in the world. It held that title for a few short years. The Barker's Slave Quarters, it's the oldest brick building in the park. It's a pre-Civil War structure that still stands today. And then the landscape itself is quite telling. Old Cahaba is a natural draw for history buffs, but you can't have a ghost town without ghost stories. While the old town has inspired pages and pages of supernatural fiction, when the sun goes down, not everything can be readily explained. The most recent one we hear the most about from our visitors is the laughing children in the new cemetery. And it doesn't have to be at night, people will be there during the day and they'll hear children laughing and playing in the woods. And they know we lock the gates at night and they'll come and say, you know, you need to go check and get those kids out of there. We used to go look for them, we don't anymore because there, there aren't any children down there, not any live ones anyway. Offering everything from a variety of guided history tours to hiking trails and even their popular annual haunted history event, the folks at Old Cahaba Archaeological Park hope to reconnect visitors young and old with the foundations of our state's past. There's just so much history. I, I never find a visitor who, who was aware of all, all of that history before coming here. There's always something new. You get to explore and you get to see a really special place that's, that's very magical and um, you just never know what's lurking in that Spanish moss or behind those gravestones. It's, uh, it's really quite a place. Appreciating all of what Old Cahaba has to offer can certainly take some time. The folks at the park recommend seeing the site by bike. If you didn't bring one, check in at the visitor center and they might be able to hook you up. It really is a great place to visit to get a better appreciation for all of Alabama's history. Oh yeah, one of the curators and I were standing next to an old church wall that had mm -hmm. fallen and you could see the windows plainly on the ground and imagine the sun flowing through those windows on a Sunday right. morning. Take you back to a time when that city was just vibrant with life. Oh yeah. Coming up next, it's a new way of looking at agriculture and nature. See how your smartphone can bring a still picture to life. Alabama soybean farmers help fuel the state's economy. Soybeans are used to make clean, renewable biodiesel and are a key ingredient in feed for poultry, catfish, and livestock. Soybeans are used in dozens of products we use every day. But best of all, soybean farmers generate $258 million and more than 4,000 jobs for Alabama's economy, all while helping conserve our natural resources. Explore the power of soy. For nearly 50 years, the Electric Cooperatives of Alabama have been giving young people an opportunity to visit our nation's capital, where they learn about the value of electric cooperatives and the importance of grassroots advocacy. Top students join with thousands of others touring monuments, landmarks, and meeting with their congressional delegation. The Rural Electric Youth Tour Program. Just one more way the electric cooperatives of Alabama are investing in the future of our state. Alabama wheat and feed grain farmers grow food, fuel, and freedom. Their harvest helps feed Alabama's multi-million dollar livestock, catfish, and poultry industries while reducing America's dependence on foreign countries for energy and food. By combining their strength with farmers of other commodities, feed grain growers are fueling the economic growth of Alabama communities. Brought to you by the Alabama Beef Checkoff Program. Fire up the grills. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Technology has certainly enhanced possibilities in the classroom. 
Where it can be difficult to grab a child's attention with books and paper, the interactive world available through computers, tablets, and smartphones can bring learning to life. This week, Samantha Carpenter investigates an exciting new mobile app that is revealing a new dimension to the educational landscape. When it comes to questions about soil, pests, or irrigation, farmers and gardeners are quick to turn to Alabama's Cooperative Extension System for all sorts of information. As the world's knowledge base shifts from books and brochures to the digital world, their creative minds with Extension have sought to present this material in a more compelling fashion, resulting in an exciting new technology they've named Tiger View. Tiger View is something brand new. It's an app that was developed especially for Auburn, but it allows us to bring video through pictures. Using the power of mobile technology, Tiger View can take something like a sign or standard brochure and transform it into a full multimedia experience. Hello, I'm Chief Meteorologist Josh Johnson from WSFA. A typical wall calendar becomes an interactive lesson on wildlife. Pop the toads and immobilize them so that he can swallow his... You've seen QR codes in the past that are just link, link codes. It's evolved to the point where you can use the power of the touch screen on the device uh, that helps trigger the content. So you're interacting with the content. Tiger View is an exciting tool with endless possibilities and it's a natural fit in the classroom. This is important because this is a new way of communicating with young people. We all know kids love cell phones. It's how the, the next generation communicates. This app allows us to present information in ways that wasn't possible before. We've created something called the Longleaf Pine Poster. It was created by an artist here, and then we animated it. We took a flat picture and brought it to life. My name is Gopher Toys. Turtles talk in the drawing. It's almost like a cartoon. Uh, you have to see it to interact with it. But in a minute, we describe the ecosystem of a longleaf pine forest. Bringing this added dimension to more traditional teaching material is an exciting prospect for educators. It gives you a window to any world that you want. So from an educational standpoint, uh, creative minds can, can really run wild with this technology. As soon as teachers see this, I think they connect with the opportunity that it provides. Kids are a hard audience. They really are, but this is something new enough that lets them use the technology they have to learn. While the value to educators is clear, Extension is also incorporating Tiger View into the wide range of material that they have already made available digitally. We've also used it to help explain what might be in our gardening in the South books, and that's a new series of iBooks that's released, and we're releasing another one in just a few weeks. We're trying to find all of our high-value, high-impact products and attach Tiger View to it. Tiger View is still in its early stages, but many new applications are in development. Whether it's enhancing a walking tour of a college campus, or introducing 4-H students to raising baby chicks, Extension hopes their new app pushes the ordinary a little further towards extraordinary. Extension is always looking for ways to teach. This technology really gives us an opportunity to teach in a way that makes it fun, and that's how we all like to learn. I'm not quite old enough to know what it was like to all of a sudden see television when it was created, but I think it might be like this. People are looking at their phone and all of a sudden, what they think is a still picture comes to life. It's magic. For Simply Southern, I'm Samantha Carpenter. You can get more information on Tiger View, including where to download some demo images for use with the app, by visiting tigerviewapp.com and trying it out for yourself. You know, the first time Emory showed me that, I was a bit taken aback. Yeah, it's a little startling to see that static image start wobbling around. It was, but it's cold. Oh, it yeah. Cold. Very neat. When we return, one Alabama farmer is taking a different approach to making a living on his Calhoun County farm. While most other dairies sell the milk from their cows, he's taking the finished product one step further.
seriously? Have some respect. Pick it up, man. Did you just litter? Take pride in your school. Pick it up, man. Clean it up, dude. Besides keeping your campus clean, adopt a mile with Roadside Cleanup. Attend the next Coastal Cleanup Day or pitch in on the annual Spring Cleanup Campaign. Make a difference by picking up litter and... Don't drop it on Alabama! Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. Nothing brings the family together like U.S. farm-raised catfish. American catfish farmers are dedicated to producing a premium, healthy catfish with a consistently mild, sweet flavor. Because we take as much pride in our work as you do in your cooking. From our family farms to your family's table, you can be sure you're getting the highest quality fish. Because your family deserves the best. U.S. farm-raised catfish. For years, the number of dairy farms in Alabama has declined, from a peak of several thousand in 1944 to only about 50 farms in the state milking cows today. As Kevin Worthington tells us, one of those that remains is taking a different approach. Instead of selling their milk, they're turning it into cheese. If it can be made from milk, chances are David Wright has made it. Originally starting off as a commercial dairy, Wright opted to make his living by bottling some of his milk and making the rest into ice cream and selling those products directly to consumers from a small store on his farm in Alexandria. After 16 years of running a store, we, we thought we might rather do something a little different and seasonal dairying appealed to me. And uh, what we've done for, for about uh, the last four years is done this just on a seasonal basis and we've switched over just to cheese and butter because you always have sometimes you have more milk than you can handle so we've got the butter again we can skim the cream off of it make the butter and that takes care of our surplus we're trying to balance everything all the time even though it's a product that's easily enjoyed with nearly every food imaginable cheese making is a scientific process involving time temperature culture, and pH. Cheese is, is a lot more difficult than bottling milk. Bottling milk is kind of mechanical. It's about 95% mechanical and 5% um, science. But when you get into cheese, it's a whole different story. It's about 5% mechanical and the rest of it is just strictly science because there's a lot going on there, a lot of chemistry going on in there. The Wrights produce nine kinds of cheeses, from classic types of cheddar, gouda, and pepper cheeses, to specialties like Italian truffle cheese, and even a beer cheese. Now, while he enjoys everything he makes, David Wright says it's hard to go wrong with classic cheddar. Cheddar cheese is kind of like vanilla ice cream. Uh, you know, it's, that's the, the standard, it seems like, around here anyway. But uh, I do enjoy the other cheeses as well but just as the, that everyday cheese that you might put in a lasagna or you might put in uh, tacos or something like that uh, or just a snack, it's hard to beat cheddar. Regardless of the amount of care he puts into each batch, sometimes things don't go as planned, but that's oftentimes a good thing. We keep a, a recipe book in there and then we write down everything we do. And some days something will happen a water heater might give you a hard time and you, you know you have to wait on it and so something in the process of making that cheese goes awry and you do it differently and then uh, six months later you might open up that cheese and say wow that's better than usual you go back to see check your recipe what you did that day and you might discover that that little mistake that you thought you made that day was a real good idea and, and so you try to duplicate that again so a lot of cheeses have been made by mistake any cheesemaker would tell you that over the years many dairy farmers in alabama have stopped milking cows opting instead for other areas of agriculture, while others have struggled to stay afloat. But David Wright says he's content on his farm, regardless of what the future holds. My son's interested in making cheese, so when he gets out of college, uh, he may decide to come on board. But if he doesn't, that's fine. You know, we don't have to do this forever. I always heard that old airmen never die, they just clabber. 
<laughs> so I don't know. I might just clabber and just quit making cheese. I have no idea. For Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. You may have tasted some of Wright's cheese without even knowing it. Most of what he makes eventually winds up in restaurants throughout the South. You know, I love their beer cheese, mm -hmm. but you know that their beer cheese doesn't have alcohol in it. That's right. They have to boil the beer just to get a flavor to it because otherwise it would kill the cultures that they have to have to make the cheese. Well, they got the flavor right. Mm -hmm. After the break, Sydney Phelps with Bonnie Plants is back in the kitchen with a delicious new way to enjoy a superfood that you can grow in your own garden. When AJ was born with a heart defect, we practically lived at the hospital. We weren't prepared for that. My Alpha customers, my Alpha family made sure we had everything we needed. Now I'm even more motivated to help take care of them. Who I am fits what I do. I am Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the Quality Co-op Store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your Quality Co-op Store. There's one near you. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed. Because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. Now today I wanna to talk about the one superfood that everybody is all a buzz about, that's kale. We've heard about kale smoothies, kale chips, kale this, kale that, kale everything. Well, today I want to do a take on kale chips. Now, the thing about kale is when you get it, you want to make sure that you take the time to really wash it out. So these have already been soaking. I've already chopped a few up. Kale is, a, is really high in nutrients, a very good value. But the biggest thing is in where people don't take the time to go through and wash it, that's your biggest thing. So make sure you take the time to clean these very good. It's almost like dealing with collard greens. But, what we want to do today is we want to take the kale. I've already got some that are chipped up, as you can see here, but let's take a good piece of kale here. And you basically want to strip everything from the vein. So I'll show you this side. You can see the large stalk vein that comes through. So you want to pull these off. All right. Work through that, kind of like you do with a collard green, and basically strip it even smaller. Now, the more veins you get out, the more tender these chips are gonna be. So that's kind of the key component here. So you wanna make sure that your chips are very tender. So we've got these set up, and I'm basically just pulling, as you can see, they've got that small vein going through there, and I'm just separating. You can do that with kitchen shears, you can do it with uh, by hand, as I'm doing here. These are already some chips that have been uh, cut up that I've gotten already prepared. So we're gonna throw these in here, and even more. You know, just work that out. That's the biggest thing. So it's going to take a little bit of time, but I promise you it'll be well worth it in the end. Now, from there, we've got these in our bowl here. And, you know, a couple weeks ago we were talking about olive oil. So we've got a rosemary infused olive oil here. And I'm just going to drizzle it over top. You're going to use about two to three tablespoons, depending on how many chips that you've got, and just work that in. So once you get the good drizzle going across all of your, uh, your chips here for kale, Pull that out. Now you want to shake these up nice, get your hand in there, make sure you've got a good coating, still need to add a little bit more. And basically think of this as, you know, your regular barbecue chips or potato chips. So what we want to do here is I've got some coarse sea salt and I'm just going to take this and sprinkle it around there 
Gonna mix that in. And what that's gonna do is give us a good salt flavor to add to the chips. Now, I've got my oven already preheated here to 350 degrees. So, what we wanna do is just basically lay these chips down on a nonstick pan and kinda work them through here. So, we've got our oils and all that type stuff. Give them a little bit of room. Uh, you know, just give them some time. They're gonna braise in. When we throw these in the oven, they're gonna cook for about 10 to 15 minutes and it's gonna allow them to uh, pick up the flavor. So we're gonna throw these on in and get them out here in just a minute. All right, now our chips are done. And an easier way to tell for that, it takes, like I said, 10 to 15 minutes. And you just want them to be brown. You don't want them to be burnt. But once you get them out of the oven, you're gonna let them cool. And this is when you can hit them with your favorite barbecue seasoning. That means you have barbecue kale chips, or you can even take like a garlic and herb seasoning. So we'll do half and half here. Just let those sit, let them cool down, pull them off, let them dry, and you've got fresh kale chips ready to go. For this recipe and more, you can find that at bonnieplants.com or the mobile app, Homegrown with Bonnie Plants. You know, I've grown ornamental kale and I've grown kale for salads, but I've never grown kale for bacon. Right, well, and now you have a super simple recipe that maybe even some picky eaters of yours might like. That is true. Mm -hmm. And if you want more recipes or information on how to make your backyard garden successful, visit bonnieplants.com. You can also find out more about the stories we featured today by visiting their websites. Cahaba.com contains everything you might want to know about Alabama's first capital, from the history of the site, to photos, to actually planning a trip there. You can download the Tiger View app from your app store or get more information by visiting tigerviewapp.com. Homemade cheese and fresh churned butter are available at the Wright's Farm Store every Saturday morning. You can also check out their website at wrightsdairy.com or like them on Facebook. And we invite you to follow us here at Simply Southern either by liking our Facebook page or visiting our website at simplysoutherntv.net. We hope you'll join us at the same time next week as we explore the very foundations of liberty that we enjoy as Americans at the American Village near Birmingham. Plus, we'll show you how something as small as the opener off of a drink can makes a big difference in someone's life. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Simply Southern. I'm Mary Johnson. And I'm Jim Allen. We hope you'll make plans to be back with us again next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.